Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the Tomo Quads CS110, also known as Chopsticks. The bottom plate is 3.6 millimeters. The top plate is almost 1 millimeter. It comes with extra 3D printed pieces featuring DYS BE1104 7500KV motors, 2535 Rotor X props, mine are beat up, 6 amp Racer Star 4 in 1 ESC, 20x20 20 20 F3 flight controller, Bold Clash F01, also known as VM275T, all in one camera and VTX. I mounted it with extreme camera angle. It weighs 64 grams. I've been flying with these batteries. The heaviest of which weighs 35.3 grams, and the lightest at 480 milliamp weighs 30.8 grams. And this thing is fast. <laughs> I'm going to keep this real short. The video might not be short, but you listening to me drone on is going to be short. If you are at all interested in micros and you are going to build, you need to build one of these.
All right, so if you made it this far, we'll talk a bit about it. Uh, I did stick a buzzer back in here, but it does come with 3D printed pieces that are really nice looking that you can uh, mount here on the top. Let me grab one of those. It comes in this bag with a bunch of extra pieces. So you would typically mount this right here. You could use these holes for your receiver and then this hole for your buzzer. A standard buzzer does not fit in there. So this buzzer doesn't fit. You need a micro buzzer. And it says that very plainly on the site. So that was just my mistake. I actually have, since I built this, have gotten a few on hand. The build is very straightforward. You know, just a 4-in-1 ESC. You slap your flight controller on top, camera up front, put a buzzer in and the receiver, and you're all set to go. Let me remove that. I think if you wanted to do a top mount, you could, like if you got that uh, VTX and camera that are separated, so you can put your VTX part back here and the antenna up, and then you just had your camera up front, then you could possibly take your Velcro strap and run it across the top. You might have to mount it kind of high, kind of vertical, uh, but it, it's possible, you know, the props aren't going to strike it necessarily. You will have to, of course, be careful about your uh, battery wires, but you kind of have to be careful with it bottom mounted as well. As you can see here, I've zip tied mine. Uh, with the extreme camera angle, it's a lot of fun to fly, fast forward flight, but it does make acrobatics, or at least in my case, trying acrobatics, uh, more trying because you're covering so much ground, you do a flip or a roll or whatever, and next thing you know, there's a tree, there's a fence, there's a swing set, there's a, a house, all these things so close, and then you kind of freak out. And you may have noticed in the video, whenever you do a flip or a roll with these CMOS cameras, you kind of get that bright flash. And that flash is actually, in my opinion, more predominant in the goggles. It really hits you hard, uh, almost pretty jawing. Uh, this thing is very quiet, and I will play a bit of video, and keep in mind, I didn't do this right away with fresh props. I actually did this after the props were pretty beat up, and I just kept bending them back, and it would fly fine, so I just keep doing that. So let's listen here. So with it being so quiet, that has a definite advantage if you're flying in a neighborhood and you don't want to bother other people. It will sound less menacing, less likely to draw much attention, and of course, people won't be as afraid, especially when you fly it in and you show them, you know, it's this, this, it's so much fun, you want to take a look? Now these props are, are outstanding. Uh, I think it's well known that the Rotor X props, they are all good, not just these, but I think some of the others are pretty good too. But these props are pretty amazing. You can tell there's little dents and warps in mine, and I just keep bending them back. I'm not... Uh, too concerned. I'm just flying for fun. I'm not out there trying to impress everyone. It's just about having a good time for me. The only thing in my build that I wish I had was an OSD, which we can have. There are other flight controllers with an OSD. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a cautionary tale. It has nothing to do with this vehicle. But if you buy one of these F4s with an OSD version 1, I have bought four of these, and I've gotten two of them working and two of them not. And you can see I've got solder on them both. I don't know what the story is. There are different issues with each one. One, I could get every connect, everything connected fine. I could uh, calibrate the ESCs, but I couldn't arm it. Switch receivers, couldn't arm it. Switch ESCs, couldn't arm it. Flash, multiple versions up and down, couldn't arm it. The other one, I couldn't calibrate the ESCs, and I didn't feel comfortable flying it that way. Uh, I don't know which is which, but I'm going to continue to try. Maybe I'll find a switch somewhere. You know, I've got... 40 bucks or 50 bucks, whatever these are, and flight controllers I would like to use because I do like the OSD. Mine is extraordinarily dirty, so it's not pretty, but you know, for me, it's, it's again, it's about fun. I think if you like micros, you need to run out, you need to buy one of these. If uh, the CMOS camera throws you off, get the CSX uh, Komodo Dragon, I believe he's calling it. Yes, the CSX Komodo Dragon. That one features a slightly different frame, but it's very, very similar. It has a very thin arm. I think there's a lot of similarities, but it's got two vertical carbon pieces, I believe they're carbon, that come around and allow you to mount like the Runcam Mini or the Runcam Micro. And so I will definitely be doing that, because that's one of the big drawbacks for this is, uh, especially this time of year, I'm flying at dusk and the sun's just going down and that stretch when I run towards the sun, that there gets to be a bit of guesswork and I'm always concerned. But uh, as far as the durability goes, don't worry about these arms breaking because I have uh, bounced it off a lot of stuff. Oh, I have one particular clip I'm going to show you now.
It may not look like it, but that thing traveled about 30, 35 feet after bouncing off the grill. Um, and bent up a few props, bent it back into shape, come back, reset, whoop, back up in the air. It's uh, very durable. Don't be con uh, concerned about those arms breaking. Uh, that's part of the aerodynamics. You get that nose down, you just fly fast. Okay, that's all I have. No more flight footage, no more nothing. If you made it all this way, hooray. <laughs> Thanks for coming. I uh, appreciate your time and watching. If you like micros, go get one of these. You won't be sad. All right, questions or comments, leave those in the section down below. And thanks for watching.